Welcome. In a college physics course, you may find that high school study habits are not sufficient to succeed. Why not? Well, a college course is designed differently from a high school course, for one thing. More of the responsibility for learning is on the student. Many courses do not meet every day, and most courses are designed to have about two hours of outside work for every hour that you're actually in class. With that time, you read the section, do your homework, review your notes, seek outside help, such as videos like this. That's okay. You'll also find that a physics course builds in the skills that it requires to solve new problems. And you may find yourself looking back at sections you covered weeks ago to clarify basic concepts. That's okay too. That's taking responsibility for your own learning and is a sign of academic maturity. I'm Dr. Courtney. This particular problem gives us some practice with a basic skill that will be applied in other situations as you go forward to study torque and rotational motion. In particular, we're going to use the definition of torque that's designated with a capital Greek letter tau, and it is a vector quantity, which means it has magnitude and direction, and that's what we're asked to find. and we're asked to find it in a given situation that we were given a drawing for. So as we develop this problem, we'll reproduce that drawing. We're told that there is a rod that is free to pivot about a point here. We'll call that the pivot point. We're told that the rod is 70 centimeters long. I'm going to go ahead and convert that to meters so I don't forget. We're told that a force is applied at an angle. Sorry for the squeaking, if you can hear that. The force, of course, is a vector quantity, which also has magnitude and direction. We're told that the magnitude is 6 newtons and that the angle between the force vector and what we call the moment arm designated by R in the equations, is 25 degrees here. And so we're asked to find both the magnitude and the direction of the resulting torque. So our plan for doing so is to express the torque in terms of the moment arm R and the applied force F. Then we'll need to express the magnitude, which we will figure out separately from the direction, in terms of the magnitude of the moment arm, R, the magnitude of the force F, and something about the angle between them. Then we will substitute values and compute the torque, the magnitude of the torque. Now what about the direction? For the direction, we're going to use the right hand rule, which we'll review when we get there. So use the right hand rule, which I'll abbreviate as RHR, to find the direction. So now we're ready to evaluate this problem. The torque is defined as the cross product between the moment arm and the applied force. The cross product yields a vector quantity, which itself then has both the magnitude and the direction. And so the magnitude of the torque is computed as the magnitude of the moment arm, or the length of the moment arm, and the magnitude of the applied force times the sine of the angle between them. Physically, what does that mean? Physically, it means that only the perpendicular component of the force is affecting or contributing to the torque. So in our case, we have this applied force, and you could consider part of it as a horizontal component in this direction, and a vertical component or perpendicular component in this direction. That horizontal component is not doing anything to rotate the rod. 
only the vertical component computed as the sine of the angle between them is contributing to the torque. And so now we can compute an actual number by substituting our values 0 0.70 meters times the force of 6 newtons times the sine of 25 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, not radian mode when you compute this, and you will get that the torque is 1.775 newton meters. So that was 3 once we substituted. So now, that is the magnitude of the resulting torque. We still need to find the direction, which is given by the right-hand rule. Now, I like to tease my students and say, it's not the left-hand rule, it's not whichever hand happens to be free rule, right-hand rule. So you take your fingers and you point in the direction of the moment arm, and you curl your fingers in the direction of the applied force. So R crossed with F, and your thumb if you begin with it at a 90 degree angle to your fingers, will point in the direction of the resulting torque. So in this case, the torque is actually into the board or into the paper that you're working on. So by the right hand rule, the direction is into the page. And so, did we make a separate step to report the answer? We did. So the, the torque is 1.8 newton meters into the page is our answer. How do we determine whether this makes sense? Well, we begin with units, right? Unit analysis. In this case, we had our moment arm length in meters, the applied force in newtons already, the angle doesn't have units, and so we end up with newton meters. So that was pretty easy, and it does make sense. What about the magnitude of our answer? Let's try to think of something to bound our answer, what an upper limit should be, and see if our magnitude is reasonable from that point of view. Remember we talked about only the vertical component of the force with respect to the moment arm is contributing to the torque. So if this entire six newtons were directed perpendicular to the moment arm, then the torque would be 0.7 meters times that six newtons, which would be 4.2 newton meters. So that would be an upper bound on the magnitude of the torque. So what if we had 6.0 newtons times 0.7 meters which would be 4.2 newton meters as an upper bound. Can we get any closer than that? Yeah, we can. Because if we then think further about only the perpendicular component contributing, recall that the sine of 30 degrees is one half. So if this angle were 30 degrees, we would expect the answer to be half this large, or 2.1. As it is, our angle is 25 degrees, and so we would expect our answer to be a little bit lower than 2.1 newton meters, and indeed it is. So between the unit check, which was fairly easy in this problem, and a little bit of reasoning, we conclude that our answer is correct.